Welcome in everybody to another Baldur's Gate 3 build video. I am Senpai Zaya. Thank you so much for being here today. In today's video, I am going to be bringing you a thematic and very powerful roleplay build, the Shadow Assassin, where basically we are going to get to roleplay as a ninja, which who doesn't want to roleplay as a ninja in Baldur's Gate 3. And this build is going to be incredibly fun to play and incredibly powerful. So I hope you're excited for it. But without further ado, let's get into the character crest customization and level guides. So that way we can see exactly how to make this build work. All right, so hopping into character creation, the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is pick our origin. Now, I like the Dark Urge personally for this build because when we're Shadow Assassin, we're a little bit of a darker character. We're really adept at killing people. But on top of that, the uh, spoiler alert. For those that don't want to see, then just skip like 10 seconds ahead. But you do get the Deathstalker Mantle, which is a cloak for um, this build that actually turns you invisible after you kill an enemy. If you're the Dark Urge, you get that as a reward. So I like that for the Dark Ur Urge personally, and especially for this build. So that's why I like going the Dark Urge mainly for that. And again, for like the thematic. But if you don't want to go Dark Urge and you just want to go with a custom OC, then that's totally mm -hmm. fine too. For the race, there are three main options that I would recommend for me personally to fit the theme and, and uh, like roleplay of this build. I'm going with uh, the Drow, and I really like the Drow for this build because the Drow fits like that Shadow Assassin theme. They're used to skulking around in the dark, obviously the Underdark. But on top of that, the Drow also does get uh, Fairy Fire at level 3 and then Darkness at level 5. And those are both really nice because of the fact that they give us concentration spells and there is a couple different uh, pieces of either equipment or abilities from like Illithid powers that do synergize with concentration that we do want to use in this build in particular. So those are really nice to have because then we can save our key points since we do get access to darkness with key points with our subclass. But this gives us that once per uh, day use and we don't have to spend any key points. So again, that's really nice. And on top of all that, we get the superior dark vision, which is super nice since we want to be sticking to the shadows. And then we get proficiency with the rapier, short sword and hand crossbow, which is again, just gives us some extra different types of weapons that we are able to use. But moving on, you can pick whatever uh, for your sub race of drow that you prefer. I prefer to go with uh, evil aligned drow because we are the dark urge. But again, this does not really matter too much background. The only one you can take is haunted one. And then in terms of abilities, this is how I like to run it personally. I like having the decks at 17, not just 16, because with the hags hair, we can get our decks up to 20 with only one ASI. So that's really nice. And then uh, I put uh, my dump everything else when it comes to intelligence and charisma, because we're just we just don't need them. And then wisdom at 16, because that is like our uh, modifier. And we do use our wisdom for a couple different modifiers as a monk. And then on top of that, uh, constitution at 14. So that way we have some health to work with. And then uh, the last two points I just put into strength since we are like a melee character. And there's a couple things we want to be doing, including being able to jump just a little bit further and stuff. So I like having strength, not as a negative, but those last two points you can put wherever you want and be just fine. So this is how I would start off with character customization and level one so let's move on to level two all right so moving on to level two of course we're gonna take our second level in monk we're gonna go all the way up to level six with monk and then we're gonna switch over to rogue and then finish out with more monk levels so level two what you get as a monk is you get a couple bonus actions that you can use uh these are going to be nice they do require one key point but for the early game, these are pretty nice. It's basically very similar to the rogues cunning actions that they get. So you're going to be able to disengage. You're going to be able to double your movement speed and which is just dash and then uh, jump no longer requires a bonus action. So that's a little bit different from the rogue. That one's really nice. And then patient patient defense is going to give you all attackers disadvantage on attack rolls against you and you're going to have advantage on dexterity saving throws so all those are pretty nice they're not like game breaking or anything but they are nice to have now moving on to level three this is of course where we're going to pick our subclass and naturally shadow assassin we got to get the shadow part of shadow assassin so we're going to go with way of the shadow this is going to give you a couple different spells it's not the most powerful i think that at level three as a baseline the other two monk subclasses are stronger coming out of the gate but this class in particular and this build in particular is a lot more reliant on the way that you play it and the equipment that you have to make it work. So that is something that I am going to note with this build to truly get the most out of this build is going to be pretty equipment reliant and also just uh, the way that you play it because it's not gonna play traditionally like other builds. You're gonna be using stealth a lot more. You're going to be 
abusing uh, certain game mechanics like the surprise round and like being able to attack enemies from stealth and not being seen, that type of thing. So these do help with that, but again, they're not as immediately powerful as some of the other level three classes in the game. So uh, first thing you're gonna get is you're gonna be able to get uh, the ability to hide as a bonus action and get Pass Without Trace. This is probably the best thing that you get at this level. So this is gonna be a concentration spell, but it's a class action for a monk. And this is gonna give you and all of your uh, allies a plus 10 bonus, flat plus 10 bonus to stealth checks, which is super nice for what we're trying to do with this build with set up assassinations. And we do have equipment and there's even illithid powers that do synergize with concentrating on a quote unquote spell. So this is gonna be super nice because this is the easiest one to just activate and keep on assuming that you don't break concentration through taking damage. So that way we can get all those synergies going. Now, the next one you're going to get is darkness. This one's like, it can be good. It does have its uses, especially when we get like shadow step and stuff. But the main problem with darkness for this build is because we're not going warlock. There's no other way to get devil sight, which allows you to see magically see in uh, magic and non-magic darkness uh, for this game. That means that you're able to see in any type of like darkness spell that's cast, but we don't get access to that. And shadow monks, for some reason, don't get that ability either like they just get dark vision which we already have superior dark vision because we're a drow and most races have dark vision so this this one's completely useless and then we get silence which is nice because there are some potent spell casters in the game especially later on in the game so this is another nice one to have these are all going to be concentration that take two key points each to use so you can use those as you will and then minor illusion is going to be a cantrip that you're going to gain access to and this ability is actually really, really good in this class in particular. I think it's better in this class than most other classes because it is going to allow us to set up those assassinations and getting really, really amazing surprise round opportunities. Moving on to level four, we are going to get a couple things here. The main thing that we're going to get is a feat, but before we talk about that, we're going to get slow fall. And this is, uh, it's just like a nice little bonus to have. So when you fall, you're going to use your, you can use your reaction to gain resistance to falling damage. However, you probably will have someone in your party that's going to be able to cast feather fall. So it's not a huge deal, but if you get surprised by like a trap or something like that, then this is going to help you out a little bit. Now for your feat, what I'm going to do is I'm absolutely going to rec absolutely going to recommend that you take an ability score and improvement and the reason why is because we want to get our decks up to 20 as soon as possible so as you saw at the starting stats we have it at 17 we're going to put two levels in it and then when you get the hags hair this is going to be at 20 so you're going to have that plus five to all your dexterity checks your weapon attacks and everything as well as like armor class and stuff so absolutely i recommend for your first feat is bumping decks up to 20 because it's just going to help you out more than anything else at this level now moving on to level five the thing i like about doing martial classes is there's not as much talking because we don't really have to talk about spells as much so i don't have to go in depth so i don't have to ramble on for 40 minutes you know so i really like that about martial classes i don't mind doing the longer videos but i know that for some people they want like quicker easier to digest builds and videos some people don't have you know 43 minutes to dedicate to a video so this is nice for those type of people that are more on the go so uh martial class because we are a martial class we're gonna get extra attack don't need to explain that super nice two attacks that one two is better than one but what we do get that is important is going to be Stunning Strike Melee and then Stunning Strike Unarmed. This particular build is going to be a monk build and one of the few monk builds that is better utilizing uh, a weapon instead of unarmed strikes. So having the Stunning Strike Melee is going to be really, really nice because you are going to spend a key point and you're going to possibly stun a target, which is super huge. And then you are also going to get Cloak of Shadows. This is really nice because this basically is a free invisibility that you can cast on yourself as long as you are obscured in either like dim light or completely obscured. When you press uh, C to go into stealth, if you're on computer or just whatever the button is for uh, console players, you will actually have an indicator over your cursor that is going to show you if you are fully obscured, um, lightly obscured or not obscured at all. So that is going to really help and you really should utilize that with this build. So that way you can really figure out how to like maneuver yourself and position yourself into areas to get your assassinations going and use your monk abilities like being able to go invisible and stuff. So this is really nice because it is just a free invisibility that we get to cast that does not take any resource and then if you went drow you are also going to get darkness which again is there it's nice to have it's not the best thing but it is a way to have another uh 
concentration spell for those concentration synergies that we're going to talk about later on in the video, but it doesn't use any of your key points, so it doesn't use a resource, but you can only do it once per long rest. Now, moving on to level six, I'm going to recommend that you get one more level in Monk because of Shadow Step, but if you want to start getting your rogue levels earlier than that, then you can at level six, you can start taking uh, your levels in Rogue. However, I personally, for this build, like to just go six levels in Monk, four levels in Rogue, and then finish out with two more levels in Monk. And the main reason why is because you get Shadow Step. What this does is this is like Misty Step adjacent with some advantages and some disadvantages. So this is going to allow you to teleport from one shadow to another. So whenever uh, you are lightly obscured or fully obscured, whatever, as long as you're not in full bright light, basically, you're going to be able to teleport. And the only restriction is it's gonna be 60 feet. And I guess the second restriction is that it has to be to a place that is also lightly obscured or heavily obscured. When it comes to this ability, this is insane. And this is going to be one of the best tools in our arsenal for setting up assassinations, because not only do we get basically a free teleport, we also get to get advantage on our next melee attack roll, which is huge because advantage is such a nice thing to have. And once we start getting our rogue levels, we're going to get access to sneak attack, which means that this is going to be a free sneak attack activation as well. So you are going to be able to teleport up on enemies and absolutely decimate them and assassinate them with this so this is super super nice and that's why i like just picking it up now so we have it and then getting my levels in rogue the other thing you're going to get is key empowered strikes not too too important for this build but it just means that your unarmed attacks are count as magical instead of just like non-magical damage now moving on to level seven this is where we are going to switch over and we are going to start taking our levels in rogue and what you're going to get here is you're going to get sneak attack at this level it's going to be an extra 1d6 of damage and the condition for using sneak attack two conditions is you can only use it once per turn which uh does suck because we do get multiple attacks but it would be insanely broken if you could do it more than once per turn and you also have to have advantage on your target so like i talked to before talked about before with that shadow step it gives us advantage so it's a way to just gain advantage on um, our next attack roll. So that way we can get a free sneak attack in, which is super useful and great quality of life. And then of course, because you are rogue, you're gonna get one proficiency and two expertise. What I recommend you do is you put your uh, proficiency in stealth, and then you put one of your expertise in stealth, so you're gonna get a plus 10. So with this and Pass Without Trace, you're gonna have a flat plus 20 to your stealth. And your stealth is gonna be super important because the way that you play this build is very much with setting up surprise rounds and setting up assassinating targets and picking off targets before you actually go into a full combat. So having as much of a bonus to your stealth as possible is going to help immensely with that. And then for your second expertise, you can pick whichever one that you prefer. Uh, I like taking either acrobats or perception. Uh, the perception is really, really good when it comes to, let me uh, fix this really quick, but the perception is really good because perception is just a really nice passive uh, ability to have and having a really high perception is going to help a lot during exploration. So I recommend that, but you can also take acrobats if you wish. Moving on to level eight, we are going to get those cunning actions that I talked about before. This is gonna be hide, dash and disengage a little redundant with what we already have but the benefit is for uh the disengage and dash specifically these will these you can use these and not use key points so that is something to know is uh you don't get as much benefit as the uh monk ones because like they give like a little bit extra benefit but they use two key points so that's something to keep in mind if you want to conserve key points and still want to use these instead of doing like a flurry of blows or a shadow step then you have the ability to do that without spending any of your key points which is just nice to have moving on to level nine this is where we are going to get a rogue subclass and for a lot of people they might wonder i'm sure i'm gonna get some comments like oh why don't you take thief you know you get that additional bonus action and thief is super super meta especially when you are combining it with classes that uh are like dual wielding classes or classes like monk right because of that additional bonus action now what i will say is with this specific build in way of the shadow you really are a monk that's focused on using your melee weapon and not unarmed strikes so because we're not using unarmed strikes as much and we're not focused on using unarmed strikes the way like way of the open hand would be an additional bonus action isn't as useful is it still really really nice to have yes of course like we can there's a lot of options that monks have with their bonus action so it's always nice to have an additional bonus action 
However, with this specific build, it is actually better to go assassin plus shadow assassin. I can pick up the assassin part, right? And the reason why is because the whole point of this build is to literally be a ninja and assassinate targets. And the three abilities that you get when you choose assassin at level three are absolutely insane. I think outweigh for this particular build getting one additional bonus action. So the first thing that you are going to get is you are going to get in combat advantage on attack rolls against targets that haven't taken a turn yet. This is a dex build. So you are going to have a really high initiative and this is going to make it to where you can whatever first target that you want to attack you can get that sneak attack damage on guaranteed because you're going to have advantage on bait on all the targets that haven't taken a turn yet right so you should be going first with this build and then you just get to pick and choose who you're going to assassinate sneak attack stack all your damage on absolutely insane this is really really nice and then your extra attacks are also going to have advantage on those other targets as well next thing that is going to make this build that makes this build like even more insane and, and us better at one shot targets is going to be any successful attack against surprise creatures a critical hit so of course because we are trying to set up surprise rounds we are trying to do things from stealth this is going to lead to a lot of critical hits and a lot of damage and on top of that we're going to have advantage so when you roll advantage and guaranteed critical strikes that equals a ton of damage i don't need to tell you that you should know that but still it's absolutely insane and the last thing that you get which is again really really nice and some people might are, have have heard have been a little confused on how this works but this is going to give you uh it's going to restore your action your bonus action at the start of combat why this is important is because with this build you are going to be stealthing and you're going to try to sneak up on a combat encounter and assassinate a target before the combat actually starts what this will do is if it does trigger combat it's going to trigger a surprise round now when you go into that surprise round normally the character that triggered it whatever action or bonus action they use they will not have it for that surprise round right which would be really bad for this build because after we assassinate one target then we're going to waste that surprise round we're going to waste all these other abilities that we get this allows you to assassinate a specific target start that surprise round and then do it again right so you are able to pick off multiple targets before combat even starts which really trivializes a lot of encounters in the game so super super huge the the shadow and the assassin like they combine perfectly together to make the this just absolutely just dominant threat that can trivialize some encounters and even the ones where you can't set up like these perfect assassinations you're still able to output quite a bit of damage now moving on to level 10 i prefer to go rogue uh, up to level four and the reason why is because we end up doing an eight and four split and that's going to give us three feats which is super nice to have and it's just the math works out a lot better but also at rogue level four you get another 1d6 die on your sneak attack so it's going to be 2d6 so i think that those together is why you should take rogue up to four is a feat and extra sneak attack damage and the feat that i'm going to recommend you go is uh it's not going to be another ability score improvement like you get you would get really minimum benefit from just getting more wisdom it's really just going to be more ac uh what i recommend you do is there's two feats that you can take there's going to be alert and this is going to give you a plus five bonus to initiative and you can't be surprised the can't be surprised is really nice but really the plus five bonus to initiative is super super nice because the fact that we want to go before every other enemy so that way we have complete options on when we get the advantage on like uh the enemies that haven't taken a turn yet in combat and everything so that's super important but what i recommend you get first and then you pick uh alert up as your final feat i recommend you get savage attacker and the reason why is because this is going to increase our damage output by quite a bit so basically what this does is when you make a melee attack you are going to roll your damage die twice and then you're going to use the highest result so what this does is this basically doubles your chance to output as much damage as possible and get off those like true like one shot assassinations on targets so i think that this is super important for this build because the whole point of this build is to assassinate targets so anything that you can take that can help you absolutely do as much damage as possible with a single strike you should take now moving on to level 11 we're going we are going to switch back into monk and then we're going to finish off with monk so what you get at level 7 here for a monk is you're going to get evasion which basically means that if you would fail dexterity saving throw you only take half damage if you succeed you take no damage and then stillness of mind uh, it's pretty redundant if you did pick drow but if you are charmed or frightened you are, are going to automatically remove the condition basically uh as a uh, fate ancestry you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed so you already are pretty protected against that but it's just a nice little quality of life thing to have but other than that you don't really get too much at this level the main thing really is just the extra key point that you get 
However, at level eight and for our final level, we are going to get another feat. And this is where I recommend that you take alert and you should have a plus five. I don't have the hags here yet on this character. Cause again, when I make these builds, I have to make new characters for each build. And so um, I usually do the gameplay uh, later and then record like this section of the video first. So that way it's like easier and it just makes sense and like editing and stuff. But uh, with this, you should have like 10 plus initiative right there's a lot of equipment that also gives you uh like initiative bonuses and stuff especially like an act two so with this like once you get this ability you should always be going first in combat and this is going to allow you to really pick and choose the targets that you need that advantage you need that sneak attack all of that damage on and be able to assassinate those key targets that you really need to get which is what this build excels at so that's levels one through 12 uh the level section isn't as like in depth as like a spellcaster would be because there's a lot more options with the spellcaster but really for this build this build is a lot more like equipment in the way that you play this game reliant than some of my other builds so the next session the equipment the equipment section is actually going to be a little bit more in depth than it usually is because there is specific equipment that you want to get with this build that really synergize and can really take this build to the next level because if you don't play this build right and you don't have the right equipment then this build can feel pretty mediocre at times so let's get into the uh equipment section all right so moving on to the equipment section one of the things that i'm going to point out is there is actually a lot of equipment in the game that supports this assassin type play style a lot more than some of the other builds that i've done so uh as you can see by the equipment that is popping up on the screen right over here there is going to be a lot of equipment that is going to give you bonuses when you are lightly obscured or heavily obscured whatever and on top of that there's ones that give you like uh you can crit on a lower number and those stack of course so that's going to be even more helpful because again you really do want to land a critical a critical strike because you want to do as much damage as possible to assassinate your targets there's other ones that give you like extra damage and stuff so there is a lot of benefit to using these and these are pretty core to this build because without all of these bonuses it's going to be harder to assassinate your targets now normally i like to make builds that aren't as reliant on equipment so that way people can just have fun with them and they don't feel too shoehorned to using specific equipment but with this build i really feel like it takes it from like a good build to a great or even top tier build when you get these pieces of equipment and you really start getting all the gears turning for this build because again like your main objective in this build is to assassinate targets so you need to have all the help you can get to do as much damage as possible with a single strike there of course as you've seen there's also a lot of really good uh weapons that just synergize with this type of like assassin play style so you really do get to pick and choose which ones that you do want to use and there's ones all the way from act one all the way to act three when it comes to it so this build is going to be very well supported by the equipment that you do get to find as you play through the game now in another thing that i want to point out is like i said there's also going to be equipment that synergize and illithid powers that synergize with like when you're concentrating on a spell you get bonuses so there's going to be other ones that you are going to want to look out for because of the fact that with this build specifically we have a really easy time having spells that we can just concentrate on and maintain that concentration like pass without trace for example lasts until long rest so you can just start that after a long rest use pass without trace and then get all those bonuses from concentrating on spell and then as long as you maintain concentration you'll have them for your entire uh, day of playing so all that stuff's really important this equipment section is a little bit longer but i wanted to emphasize how important the equipment actually is to this build to really take it to the next level all right and for the build recap a uh, build recap is pretty simple but with this build I think it's a ton of fun to play because playing a ninja is like a very common fantasy for people and just a very fun fantasy to play and with this build you really do get to live out like that ninja fantasy of just like going in using the shadows using darkness to your advantage and then absolutely assassinating and dominating targets there is going to be a lot of combat encounters in the game that you are going to absolutely trivialize by the nature of this build because of the fact that like you can pick off key targets before even actually starting combat so all of that combined, even though it's a more equipment uh, reliant build than some of my other builds I do, all that combined, like this build is going to be a little bit harder to play because you don't approach combat in situations the way you traditionally would in Baldur's Gate 3. It does take a little bit more finesse and setup to make work, but 
on the flip side that makes it so much more rewarding to play because when you do set it up and you do get off like those perfect assassinations there's not a lot of times in this game where i felt like i felt as good as doing that right like it's very easy to just like up cast a fireball and like blow everyone up but that doesn't feel as rewarding as like setting up like these perfect assassinations at least to me personally so this build is incredibly fun to play it's incredibly thematic and it can be incredibly powerful in the right hands so i really do hope you enjoyed this video please let me know if you did by leaving a like on the video as well as hitting the subscribe button so that we can stay up to date with all the content i'm dropping i do drop videos every friday so make sure to come back next friday for that video as well and leave a comment down below let me know what other type of builds you want to see in baldur's gate 3 but that's all the time i have for you today so i will see you in the next one